Bob, thanks for being with us today. I do want to get to that survey, but first, um, some of the news that broke this morning that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac regulator, the FHFA, uh, has moved to ease the cash crunch at mortgage servicers, and that specifically those servicers were on the hook for as long as a year's worth of payments on mortgages on forbearance, and now that's been capped at four months. How meaningful is this? What does this do to the overall mortgage market? Thanks for having me on. Yes, that's an important move by the FHFA, and we thank them for that. It reduces the servicers' obligations to make payments for borrowers who are unable to make their payments, to advance those payments to the investors. With Fannie Mae, there was a chance it could have gone on for up to a year, and this cap at four months definitely helps reduce the worst-case scenario. And in terms of the survey that you just released, uh, what are we seeing in terms of those forbearance numbers? And given the fact that it has been the jump we've seen in recent weeks has been so closely tied to jobless claims and, and the fact that we're seeing tens of millions of Americans actually now uh, start to file for unemployment. Is it safe to say that we're potentially seeing a peak yet in the forbearance numbers or that the worst is still yet to come? It's the latter. The worst is still yet to come. We're at about 6 percent, as you mentioned, nationally. But remember, we've really only had one mortgage payment due since the pandemic took effect, the April 1st payment. So we expect that there'll be another spike as the May 1st payment approaches, as borrowers who were able to make the April payment may not be able to make the May one. So we do expect these numbers to continue to increase. Bob, do you have any sense um, of how many of the people requesting forbearance are, are going to uh, continue to need that and how many might be just requesting it just in case as a stopgap because it was so easy under the CARES Act uh, to do that? Yes, we are very concerned that some borrowers who have not had a hardship related to the pandemic, which is the qualifying requirement for the forbearance, are nonetheless taking advantage of it, which we, of course, discourage. If you can make your payments, you should continue to make your payments. But to your point, there may be some borrowers who were worried about their ability to make their payment, but things have actually worked out okay. So there are some borrowers who have asked for forbearance and not needed it yet. So we would just encourage borrowers who really have a hardship to get in touch with your servicers and get this needed relief. But there will be some for whom, uh, whether it's the stimulus payments or unemployment benefits, allow them to keep making those mortgage payments. Yeah, of course, as we're seeing the forbearance requests and the activ activity um, take root, the flip side of this is what it's doing to credit conditions more broadly. It's something CNBC's own Diana Olick has been reporting on pretty closely. She shared a stat with me this morning that homeowners today have a record collective $6.2 trillion in home equity, and yet they can't tap the way that they could just a month ago. What are you seeing in terms of those conditions? And how worrisome is it for people that maybe do want to do things like refi or actually potentially buy a home right now? Well, the good news is that credit is still flowing through our members at the Mortgage Bankers Association, whether it's for a purchase or for a refinance. And there have been a lot of accommodations made by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and other uh, buyers of mortgages so that uh, things that used to have to happen face to face, like appraisals and interior inspections, are no longer required for a lot of loans. So the good news, and Diana's right about that record amount of home equity, one can get a cash out refinance still with lenders at the at the MBA. So that's positive. We need to make sure that those loans continue to have a home in the secondary market with Fannie and Freddie. But that credit is still flowing, which is positive. Although, Bob, we have seen uh, some lending standards uh, tighten up. I mean, HELOC opportunities have uh, lessened a bit at a time where people could really use a little additional credit. Do you see that being temporary in nature? And how sensitive will banks be to signs that the economy is beginning to reopen? Yes, I do see that as temporary. And another way to access the cash other than a home equity line of credit, which you're right, we have seen some tightening, is through a cash out refinance, which uh, all of our lenders offer. And I do think that as soon as people start to see the economy reopen and some of the unemployment figures improve, I think they'll take stock and they will look at their loan terms again and make that credit available. Because remember, we came into this at a record low delinquency rate, hadn't been this low since uh, at least 1979, very good credit quality and strong underwriting standards. So we are not having a credit crisis. This is simply a temporary uh, 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 increase in unemployment and that's affecting a lot of people. 
And Bob, I've heard from some folks who are considering either taking out a HELOC or trying to or doing a cash out refinance, and they're concerned about what the standards are now, whether employment is being verified in the same way, uh, whether perhaps institutions are looking at what type of institution employs you. If you're uh, employed by an airline, for example, is it going to be harder uh, to get approval? Well, Sure. I think that lenders are taking prudent steps from a risk management perspective to ensure that the borrower not only is employed when the loan application is taken, but is still employed right up to the day of closing. Because, of course, we don't want to provide unsustainable home financing for anybody. So if somebody uh, has suffered a job loss between the time of application and the time the loan closes, you can expect lenders to be inquiring into that. And it uh, you know, and responding ac accordingly. Of course, for any existing loan, for instance, if you're looking at a refinance, your existing loan, you of course can apply for forbearance if you do in fact have an interruption to your income. And so finally, Bob, um, just when we talk about liquidity facilities and we talk about some of these programs that are being, being stood up by, by the government and the regulators right now, are there areas within the mortgage market where you feel like more still needs to be done? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ginny May has stood up a liquidity facility that covers FHA, VA, and USDA loans, which is very welcome and is working well. And we continue to advocate for the Fed and the Treasury to stand up a similar facility that could handle Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans, and very importantly, also handle the taxes and insurance that our mortgage servicers advance to the localities who so badly need the tax revenue, as well as to the insurance companies to ensure that the property remains well insured. So the Fed and the Treasury still need to act on that side of it.